In this video, we'll talk about null spaces. We'll define what a null space for a matrix is, and then we'll look at some examples of finding null spaces. So the null space of an m by n matrix A, denoted null A, is the set of all solutions to the homogeneous matrix equation A times x equals the zero vector. In set notation, it's the set of vectors x in Rn such that A times x is the zero vector. As I've mentioned in the last video, in the context of linear transformations, if T is a matrix transformation, T of x equals Ax, then the kernel of T is the null space of A. Remember that the kernel is the set of input vectors that give you the output 0, which in this case is a set of x's such that A times x equals the 0 vector. Another remark is that the null space of A is itself a vector space, making it a subspace of Rn. For practice, let's check the three conditions to make sure it's a subspace. Firstly, is the zero vector in the null space of A? If A had columns A1, A2, and so forth through An, then A times the zero vector would be the linear combination 0A1 plus 0A2 and so forth plus 0an, which is the zero vector. So yes, the zero vector is in the null space of A. Two, we want to check if the null space of A is closed under addition. Check this, let's start with two vectors that's in the null space. So let's say x and y are two vectors in the null space of A. Now we want to ask, is x plus y in the null space? Well, to check this, I can do a times x plus y, but the a here distributes to give me a times x plus a times y. Since x is in the null space, a times x is the zero vector, and since y is in the null space, a times y is the zero vector. So I have the sum of the zero vector plus the zero vector, which gives me the zero vector. So that tells me that x plus y is in the null space of A, which means that, yes, the null space of A is closed under vector addition. Lastly, we want to check, is null space of A closed under scalar multiplication? To check this, let's take an arbitrary scalar C and a vector x in the null space of A. So the question is, is c times x also in the null space of a? Well, let's take the multiplication a times the vector c times x. This can be rewritten as c times ax. Well, since x is in the null space of a, ax is 0. So I end up with c times 0, and c times 0 is the 0 vector. So that tells me that cx is indeed in the null space of a. So the answer is yes, null space of A is closed under scalar multiplication. Since these three conditions are satisfied, we can say that the null space is a subspace of Rn. Now let's look at some examples of actually finding the null space of a matrix. In these examples, we want to find the null spaces for the following matrices. In the first one, we have A, the 2 by 2 matrix 1, 2, 3, 4. So what we want to do is find the solutions to the equation a times x equals the zero vector. To solve this equation, we want to row reduce the augmented matrix 1, 2, 0, 3, 4, 0. Our first step would be to do row 2 minus 3 row 1, giving me 1, 2, 0, 0, negative 2, and 0. Then we'll do row 1 plus row 2, to get 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 2, 0, and lastly, do negative 1 half row 2. It gives me 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. The first row of this matrix tells me that x1 equals 0, and then the second row tells me that x2 equals 0. So this equation only has one solution. x equals the 0 vector. 
So we can say that the null space of A is just the one element set, the zero vector. Since the null space of A is just a zero vector, from our last video we would be able to conclude that if A was part of a matrix transformation, then that transformation would be one to one. Another remark I want to make is that when we're row reducing this linear system, we have this augmented matrix, and the augmented part here is always 0, 0. No matter what row operations we do, the augmented part, 0, 0, doesn't change. So in the future, when you're trying to find the null space, you don't really need to add this augmented part. Just keep in mind at the end there, when you look at each of the rows, you set the equations equal to zero. In our next example here, we have the matrix B, which is 1, 1, 0, 1, 4, 5, negative 2, 6. Again, I'm going to solve the equation B times X equals zero. But I'm going to skip the step where I write the augmented matrix because we don't really need to augment the zero part. Okay, so let's just row reduce B. So I might do row 2 minus 4 row 1. This gives me 1, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, negative 2, 2. Then I'll do row 1 minus row 2 to get 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 2, 2. Okay, so now my matrix is in reduced row echelon form. Now I have two basic variables x1 and x2, and two free variables, x3 and x4. My goal is to write my solution in parametric vector form. So let's look at what the rows tell me. In my first row, I have x1 plus 2x3 and a minus x4. And even though I don't have the augmented matrix part, I know that I want to set this equal to 0. In my second row, I have x2 minus 2x3 plus 2x4. Again, set this equal to 0. Now let's write our solution. I have x equals x1, x2, x3, x4. x1 can be rewritten as negative 2x3 plus x4. x2 can be written as 2x3 and then minus 2x4 x3 is free, so I'll just write down x3 here, and x4 is free, so I'll write down x4 here. Splitting up this vector and writing our solution in parametric vector form, I have x3 times negative 2, 2, 1, 0, plus x4 times the vector 1, negative 2, 0, 1. Since x3 and x4 can be any real number, my solution consists of all linear combinations of the vector negative 2, 2, 1, 0 and the vector 1, negative 2, 0, 1. Therefore, I can describe the null space of B as the span of negative 2, 2, 1, 0 and 1, negative 2, 0, 1. If B was used in the matrix transformation, then I would have to conclude that the transformation is not one-to-one -one because the null space of B contains more than just a zero vector. In our last example here, we have the matrix C with entries 1, 2, negative 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 3, negative 1, negative 2, 6, negative 9. Let's do row 2 minus 2 row 1 and row 3 plus row 1. Gives me 1, 2, negative 1, 4, 0, 0, 5, negative 5, 0, 0, 5, negative 5. Then let's do 1 fifth row 2 to get 1, 2, negative 1, 4, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 5, negative 5. Lastly, let's do row 1 plus row 2 and row 3 minus 5 row 2. This gives me 1, 2, 0, 3. 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So x1 and x3 are my basic variables, and x2 and x4 are my free variables. The first row tells me that x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x4 equals 0, 
and my second row tells me that x3 minus x4 equals 0. So writing our solution in parametric vector form, we have x equals x1, x2, x3, x4. I can rewrite x1 as minus 2x2 minus 3x4. x2 is free, so I'll just leave it as x2. x3 is x4, and x4 is free, so I'll leave it as x4. Splitting this vector, I have x2 times negative 2, 1, 0, 0, plus x4 times negative 3, 0, 1, 1. So I see that my solutions are linear combinations of the vector negative 2, 1, 0, 0, and negative 3, 0, 1, 1. So I would say that the null space of C is the span of the vectors negative 2, 1, 0, 0, and negative 3, 0, 1, 1. Again, if C is used in the matrix transformation, then that transformation would not be 1 to 1 because the null space contains more than just the zero vector. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how to find the null space for a matrix. In our next video, we'll look at the column space of a matrix.